Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Praveen Kaur Gupta and in this video we'll talk about the arterial blood gas analysis. We'll talk about its diagnosis, its interpretation in terms of what is mixed, what is compensated and what to be called as a low or high an iron gap metabolic acidosis. Make sure you watch a complete video to understand the basic concepts of the ABG. Let's start it. Well guys, if you look at the ABG, the few basic things you should understand and the first basic comes from the normal values. Normally, the pH of a person is 7.35 to 7.45. Okay, the first thing you should understand here is 7.35 to 7.45. Secondly, look at the PCO2. A PCO2 varies from 35 to 45 mmHg. The PO2 is between 70 to 100 and 100, obviously 100 pores only when a person is on ventilators. Bicarb is 20 to 24 milli equivalents per liter and there's something called as base excess that is what is the amount of excess base in the body compared to the acids so a negative base excess will mean the deficiency of base got the point and a positive base excess means a more base compared to the acids that is more bicarb okay if you look at the next one look at the three steps to interpret abg the first thing is to look at the history and the ph a history and a ph is you have to look at the pH to decide acidosis or alkalosis. And how do you look at? Look at the pH. Secondly, we look at the acid or alkalosis. We have to now see what is the basic cause. It's respiratory or metabolic. For respiratory, look at the CO2. For metabolic, look at the bicarb. The third thing you should see is compensation or mixed. Well, sometimes it's compensation, sometimes it's mixed. And for that, you just understand what is a change of the bicarb for CO2 and what is the change of CO2 for bicarb which I'll talk about in the next few topics. First one, look at the pH. So if you get your pH is less than 7.35, you're looking at the case of acidosis, right? In this acidosis, then look at the second thing, look at the PCO2. If the PCO2 has risen, it has risen, it means what? It surely is a case of respiratory acidosis, right? Reversely, if you look at the bicarb less than 20, it refers to a metabolic cause and hence we call this a metabolic acidosis. Go to the reverse thing. If the pH is more than 7.45, it means it's alkalosis. In alkalosis, look at the bicarb and look at the PCO2. If the PCO2 is less than 35, it means it's a respiratory cause of alkalosis. And reversely, if the bicarb has increased, the bicarb being more than 24, this bicarb being more than 24, it refers to what? It refers surely a case of metabolic alkalosis. Now, what you've done is, you've diagnosed a primary disorders. Well, to form the primary disorders, what happens, our body compensates. And how does it compensate? It's surely a case of, suppose we have an increased bicarb. The bicarb will then combine with the H plus ions, and this will make H2CO3, and you all know H2CO3 will break to form H2O and CO2, and the CO2 will start increasing. So for an increase in bicarb, our body will try to increase CO2 and that is how it tries to compensate for it. And the reverse is also true. So look at the compensation here. And look at a very simple rule. The simple rule I'll talk about here is the same direction rule. What is that? Deco. If it is a case of metabolic acidosis, you all know for acidosis, the pH is low. Now because it's metabolic cause, the primary chain should be a HCO3 which has decreased. And same direction rule says the PCO2 will also decrease here. Metabolic alkalosis, the pH has risen, increased. The bicarb has increased. And to compensate for this, the CO2 will also increase. Look at the same direction rule. When you look at the respiratory acidosis, look at the decrease in the pH. Now, why it is decreased? Because the PCO2 has increased. And because the PCO2 has increased, the bicarb should also increase to compensate for it. So we'll say it, respiratory acidosis with the metabolic component which is compensating for it. Reversely, look at the metabolic alkalosis where the pH has increased. The PCO2 has to decrease. Why? Because respiratory alkalosis. And to compensate for that, the bicarb will decrease so that the pH is again brought to the normal state. Right. So now we understood the same direction roots. Moving ahead. We have to now see what is the change in the bicarb for CO2 and what is the change of CO2 for the bicarb. So first of all, a bicarb change per 10 mmHg for acute case is 1, for a chronic case is 3, 
respiratory alkalosis will change it decreased of the bicarb by 2 and a decrease in the bicarb of 4 for a chronic case. It's very simple to remember 1, 2, 3 and 4 or you can remember 1, 3, 2 and 4. 1, 3, 2 and 4. If you look at the same thing in the reverse way, look at the expected PCO2 for this. A metabolic acidosis, you expect a PCO2 to have 1.5 into bicarb plus 10 mmHg. Similarly, metabolic alkalosis will have a PCO2 of 0.7 into bicarb plus 20 mmHg. Now, these formula you must remember to look for what is the amount of compensation. If at all you see there is a compensation or not. Finally, we look at, at the anion gap. What is an anion gap? See, our body has a simple rule. The rule says that all the unmeasured cation, unmeasured cation and unmeasured anion. That means, if you look at the unmeasured cation, along with this, if you add the sodium, it must be equal to unmeasured anion and this along with a bicarb and a chloride. Now, if you minus it, that means, if you look at the anion gap, anion gap is equal to unmeasured anion minus unmeasured cation and this it will be equal to what? It will be equal to a sodium minus bicarb plus chloride. This would be what is called as anion gap. So normally anion gap will look at those which you have not measured. It is 8 to 16 and the values is all about these unmeasured anion which can be phosphate, sulfate, organic acids or can be albumin also. Looking at the next one, look at the causes of a normal or a high anion gap. You will all look at this simple mnemonic, mud piles, is a simple mnemonic for uh, increased or high anion gap metabolic acidosis. Let's look at few of the cases. Case 1. In this case, what you are seeing is a patient has a pH of 7.25. So, what we look at? We look at the acidosis component. Well, what is the basic reason that acidosis? Look at the PCO2. The PCO2 is 77 which is increased. So, we will say the first thing is a respiratory acidosis. Now you have to look at what is the increase in the PCO2. It is around 40. Why 40? Look at 35 minus 7, 77 minus 35 is around 40. For this 40, you expect an increase in what? An increase in the bicarb. The bicarb chain should be either 4 for an acute case or 12 for a chronic case. Remember 1, 2, 3 and 4. So this gives us a bicarb chain should happen with 4 or 12. But what you're saying is the bicarb has changed no, it has not changed. The bicarb is normal here. That means it's a case of a normal bicarb. That means the case is what? It's a case of respiratory, respiratory acidosis. And along with that, because the bicarb has not changed, it means there's a mixed component of, it's a mixed component of metabolic acidosis as well. The two components that is happening here, because there's no compensation you see there. Look at the second case. In a second case, Look at this one. A 30 year old female has acute intestinal obstruction. What do you look at? The pH 7.52. It means it is, yes, alkalosis. Well, because of this alkalosis, look at the bicarb, which is increased. And they will call it a metabolic case of alkalosis. Well, for this change in bicarb, what is the change? The change is around what? 30. Why? It is 52 minus 22. It is around 30. It has changed. 30 has increased. For increase of bicarb of 30, what do you expect? Look at the formula. The formula was 0.7 into, in this case, 52, that is bicarb, plus 20. Remember the formula? Yes, you should remember the formula. Go back and look at the formula. That is what you expect the PCO2 to be. And this comes around to be around 57. But what is the PCO2 here? It is 48. That means it should have been 47. It is still 48. That means it's a partially compensated case of metabolic alcohol. So we we'll define this as a metabolic alkalosis alkalosis with a partial a partial compensation a simple way to interpret the whole thing finally the third one being a senior old patient who has a copd the ph is 7.33 again it is what it is a case of acidosis look at the pco2 it is increased so we'll call it nothing but a respiratory acidosis now, look at the bicarb change. It is 37.4. At 37.4, it should increase to how much? See, it has increased by 40. So, for this 40, you expect a change of, for acute, 4. For a chronic, you expect 12. Has it changed so? Has it changed so? Look at the thing. It should be 37. Yes, it has changed to be 
12 only because normal bicarb is 25. So from 25, it has come down, come increased to 37. That means it is compensated cause of respiratory acidosis. We'll define this as a respiratory acidosis with compensation with compensation that is how you all will able to diagnose this case if you have any doubt let me know because this is a simple way to interpret all the abg look at the ph look at the primary cause and look how the secondary thing is able to compensate or not able to compensate in the same same way i hope you like the video if you do like please put in the comment box to subscribe to the video and make sure you do let me know if you want anything else in your preparation i'll surely bring you up in the same way i did for abg analysis thank you god bless you all take care